The next time you visit a doctor, you may be asked to take a paracetamol to beat that fever instead of a specific tablet. This essentially means that it will now be left to your discretion or the chemist to decide which tablet you want to take depending on its price. While the government has been trying to control prices of drugs, the Indian Medical Association believes that the fundamental flaw with this is the price differentiation within the same category and that it is not fair to put the onus on the doctors. It is the irony of the situation that in India you are allowing the same drug with the same quality with the same company under three different segments of prices. This should not happen. Here's an example. Let's say you're diagnosed with fever. The doctor will then have to prescribe the salt and not the brand name, meaning the prescription will mention the generic name paracetamol in this case and not the brand names Crocin or Calpol. The point is if really medicines are available under generic name and there is good competition, then the prices will go down like anything. I would say that prices would come down to one fourth of what they are today. The biggest concern doctors have is the quality of the medicine they are prescribing. They say branded drugs are well-known drugs that are of better quality. One in a million if there is a uh, pollutant or an ingredient that is say an impurity, and then that impurity can affect my patient. No, we are aware then that is why we write some medicines that this is of a very high quality uh, product uh, and therefore we would write it. Experts, however, believe there is no research to prove that the quality of generic drugs is any lower than branded ones. We know very well that a lot of uh, 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 branded drugs are actually manufactured in the small scale sector. You know, I mean, for economies of scale or whatever to keep their costs uh, low. So, uh, are we sure that they are assuring that kind of quality that would happen in a highly sophisticated uh, large manufacturing unit? One doesn't know. While the government pushes for price control of drugs, experts in fact believe that this proposal is unimplementable. But where does that leave you and me? Should we rely on the doctor, the chemist, or just do online research? Amata Balachandra for Mirror Now. Well, it's, it's a really complicated problem, but we're going to try and break it down and help you understand what's really going on. Let me put this up on your screen. This was a note or a message from our Prime Minister not long ago where he said, doctors write prescriptions in such a way that poor people do not understand the handwriting. And that's something we've all faced. He says, the poor person has to buy that medicine from a private store at very high prices. We will bring in a legal framework. By, by which, if a doctor writes a prescription, he has to write it, that it will be enough for the patients to buy the generic medicines and he need not buy other medicines. This was a comment by the Prime Minister after which we saw some notices being sent out by the Health Ministry. Uh, the Health Ministry insisted and made it mandatory for pharma companies to carry the generic name of drugs on packs in at least two fonts. Now, uh, we're going to try and explain this. I have a couple of doctors on the panel. Uh, let me just introduce our guests for this evening and we'll try and explain this complicated problem to you. Basically, what this means is that the doctor no longer picks the brand. He just gives you the medicine and you get to pick the brand perhaps at the chemist store. But the question is, how many of us understand what's going on in our prescriptions? If that choice gets passed on from the actual patient to the chemist, then are we actually putting our lives in the chemist's hands? And if there is a worry that the doctors are prescribing the most expensive type of medicine, will that form of corruption then move to the chemist? And are we comfortable with that change? That's the question we're asking this evening. Joining me on the show, Narendra Thaneja is the national spokesperson of the BJP. KK Agarwal is the president of the Heart Care Foundation of India and the Indian Medical Association. Dr. Ramakant Deshpande is the director of the Asian Cancer Institute. Dr. Sanjeev Mehta is a pulmonologist at Leelavati Hospital. Dr. Anand Fakde is the All India Drug Action Network. He represents them. Dr. Samir Dalwai is the president of the Mumbai branch of the Indian Academy of of pediatrics and um, we also have uh, Osad Shahakari is a chemist who sells generic uh, medicines and Nikhil Desai is a citizen. I'm glad to have Nikhil on the show. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Deshpande and Dr. Mehta. Dr. Mehta, explain to us the difference between a generic drug 
and the brand name of the generic drug and why should we be concerned? I think, uh, first of all, thank you, Faith. This is so important. I'm glad you uh, bring this out. It's important for us to understand that any product, uh, any drug has a chemical uh, which is sold and then certain companies put their name and they sell it. For example, you gave the example of paracetamol, probably made by 30, 40 companies, uh, and the few companies have put their name on it, which you recognize and you use. Why there is a price difference between generics and uh, the branded is because the branded usually carry a certain value. Just to give you an example, it's the same with the quality of clothing that you wear. It's, there is a difference. Now, the reason why many of these branded ones are that expensive, and just so that our audience understands this, every drug is not the same. There are those that are made in FDA-approved uh, factories, factories, especially yes. those which are exported. And we are the largest exporter of drugs in the world. These chemicals, these companies are international brand at that value, they're, just, they're that, that well made. When it comes to generic, I have to say I am not aware that the same level of scrutiny is given to their uh, manufacturing processes. Then, then why are they allowed to be sold in our market? Correct. I, I really have my questions on that and that is why we as responsible doctors give you what we think is the, the best, best quality. So, so basically, uh, Dr. Dr. Deshpande, what this, be, what this regulation means is that up till now, if there was a doctor who was writing either crocine or calpol for a fever, he's now going to have to write out paracetamol and the patient takes that to the chemist and chooses which version of the paracetamol the patient really wants? Uh, is, that, is that how it works? Uh, it won't work that way. See, my understanding is very clear that you must mention the generic, which is the chemical in a, within, within that particular medicine. There are certain basic regulations that one thing is this regulation has already come from the Medical Council of India uh, almost about a year back, in, uh, to, uh, over a year back, and this came as a definite regulation which was not being followed. And that is how the uh, Prime Minister landed up actually making a reference to this. Mm. So you need to have a serial number, you need to have the generic uh, uh, name of the drug, you need to have its strength, and then if you wish, I mean this clarification has already come into many papers, that if you wish, you as a doctor can actually recommend a particular brand which okay. the patient can actually take to the, uh, chem okay, the so, chemist. So, so, so let me ask you this again. Yes. So the, I go to the doctor with a fever. Yes. He says, I recommend a paracetamol. Yes. I think you should use Calpol. Correct. But you can use whatever you want. That's right. Absolutely right. Now, when you write a, a, a prescription like that, you know, by regulation, by law, the pharmacist cannot really change the medicine which is going to be given. So there you need to tweak that particular law to allow the pharmacist to accept the patient's wish. For example, if you say okay. that, no, I don't want this brand, I would like to use some other brand, mm -hmm. then you will actually need to... Uh, so here's my question, Do yeah. Dr. Deshpande. Yes. First question is, do you believe that Indian patients, in your yes. experience as a doctor, have enough information to be able to make those choices? Uh, my frank answer is no. But I think that this is a, it's a well-intentioned kind of a move. It's a welcome move because it will actually open up the whole, uh, uh, you know, the communication between the patient and the doctor. It will, uh, it will take away the, the so-called onus because the way it came up is like doctors are corrupt and that's why we are going to remove so, so corruption. I, I think that there seems to be a lack of uh, trust or perhaps a crisis of faith between the government and uh, the, the medical community at this point. And my concern is, and my concern is simply this, uh, Dr. Deshpande, if the government believes that doctors are corrupt and they're actually now moving the buck down one level to the chemist. Are we now allowing the chemist to, to pick up that same uh, corruption? Okay, Dr. Mehta. Yeah, I, I think that's a very important point, Faye, because how does a patient know which drug he's been given by the chemist? And with due respect to chemists, and I'm not going to uh, take any sides on this, but when a chemist is asked to write a paracetamol, I would assume it's human to give the one which has got the maximum margin to the chemist. I mean, I, and, oh, and also, uh, also, Dr. Mehta, we know, of course, that there are several pharmaceutical companies who send doctors and international junkets, um, and and uh, we understand that doctors, in turn, 
prescribe their medicines. Now, chemists are going to go on international junkets, and I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that level of corruption or the, op or, or the window for that level of corruption. Uh, and uh, I completely agree with you. And I would say this, that as far as the doctors are concerned, there's a very strong MCI uh, recommendation for any doctor pharma uh, interaction. It's completely been broken. I think that's very, very good. Uh, you can't even take a gift more than a pen. I think that's great. The other thing that is already with the government, apart from breaking the doctor pay, uh, pharma relationship, is already DPCO. I'm sure you're aware that the government has a rule that there is the maximum price it sets for many of the important uh, drugs. So you already have the best quality medicines at a very reasonable price as determined by the government, right. as it did for stents. All right. I, I, th I thank both of you, Dr. Mehta and Dr. Deshpande, for explaining to us what's going on. And I'm now going to take opening statements from the entire panel. I want to understand from each of you if you believe that this regulation is a good thing or a bad thing and what you think the risks are. I will start with the citizen, Mr. Nikhil Desai. Uh, as a senior citizen, are you comfortable with this change? Uh, <coughs> Fair. If the idea is to uh, see that people get a, a medicine which is less costly mm -hmm. uh, than other medicines. Like uh, cancer and other uh, disease has, uh, the medicines are so costly that uh, when they go to Tata Hospital, they can't afford those uh, medicines. And uh, that's why this generic drug is a uh, boon. Like stent in the heart, uh, the price came down drastically and it helped a lot of heart pressure now. Uh, there was a loot in stent, but in all other medicine, now a simple paracetamol uh, can be 30-40 uh, uh, company. Why 30-40 company produces a simple salt like paracetamol? Let the chemist have a menu card like thing. <laughs> And let him say, guess either. No, but but but, but, but Nikhil, no, I see. Here's I, my question. Here's no, my question. Right? I, I, Do you I, believe that all of these citizens right now in India, and you you are educated, you live in Mumbai. All of India is not Mumbai. Do you believe that they want to take a prescription no, when right. they're suffering from cancer? Go to the chemist hospitals and look at a menu and try and decide no. between this chemical and that chemical is what's best for no, them. No, I'm talking about the simple of simple disease like fever. You are telling. In the villages and all, let there be a generic store in every hospital, a government hospital at least, Cyan Hospital, KM Hospital, let there be a big store which So that's a question that, of distribution, not a question of prescription. Yeah, no, but there, uh, a, even if the doctor has prescribed a branded drug, let him go to that chemist and say, Can, Iska generic drug, jo bhi equivalent hai, muse okay. Wo okay, so you, you believe it's hai. a good thing. You believe it's a good thing. K.K. Agarwal, President of the Heart Care Foundation of India, do you believe this regulation is a good thing? And I'm opening up the phone lines for our audience. You can call us. K.K. Agarwal, go ahead. I think uh, you need to understand the whole issue differently. Okay. The whole discussion is going on without understanding the basics. Number four, let's not give an example of paracetamol. It is not a scheduled drug. It okay. is a drug which, is, which can be sold without a license, which can be sold by anybody, even outside the chemist. So let's not give an example. Now, whenever the, there are two types of drugs in the country, one is branded, second is generic. Branded means in patent, generic means out of patent. We are only talking about generic medicine which are out of patent. They can be sold in India under three names. Generic, generic, that means generic version without a trade name or a brand name. Or a trade generic which is sold by the chemist through the institutions or a brand generic. Unfortunately, all three are same cost of manufacturing, same quality, with no difference in bioavailability and bioequivalence, and from the same company and having three different prices, which is the problem. Which should be banned by the government? Uh, uh, Why K. K. Agarwal, should a drug what is the with difference the same in quality prices? of the same company be sold? Just, just listen to me. Yes, go the ahead. The prices can be 1 rupee to 10 rupees. The prices can be 1,000 times. Prices can be 900 times. And the margin to the trade in a trade generally can be as high as 1,000 times. That's the problem. Therefore, we, the government, must ban one medicine, one drug, one company, whether they sell it with a brand name or a generic name, the cost should be same. Number two, there are two types of drugs when a prescription comes, NLEM and non-NLEM. NLM is National List of Essential Medicines. 
non nlem means non not in the list of national list of essential medicines no nlem is price kept doctors have to write the mci says and you shall ensure rational prescription and use of drugs rational prescription means as far as possible choose a drug from nlem which is national list of essential medicine where the price is kept say for example in hypertension the 90% of the people will require only losartan which is causing 1 rupees on the contrary the newer drug which is non nlem may cost 19 rupees so that's the difference the so choice of a doctor is to choose nlem when you choose nlem the price is kept the profit margins are low 90% of the patients can be taken care of and even under the nlem even if you are choosing nlem the companies should not have a right to charge differential price for the same cost of manufacturing and that's the government needs to act how does it matter whether i write a generic or a brand or a trade no no so, so help me understand dr kk agarwal i'm sorry to interrupt you sir the same company is making all three I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Help me understand. So, do you believe this regulation that we're talking about today about prescriptions is that a good regulation or a bad regulation? Do you think it's helpful to the problem that you have now just highlighted to us? Remember, let me let me let me let me explain to you. We all are promoting Jan Aushadi drugs. Jan Aushadi, the Pradhan Mantri Jan Aushadi project is a generic only version, but it will not be available in the chemist unless I write Jan Aushadi. Jan Aushadi becomes a brand. when there are 80 companies making the same generic which generic the patient will take and that differentiation is the definition of a trend of a brand when multiple companies are making the same generic how do you differentiate either by the name of a trade or a brand or the pharmaceutical company i cannot write chemist cannot take the right of a doctor because they are not legally responsible for the prescription is the doctor who is responsible so i have to write paracetamol either i write a trade or a generic or the company name or the brand name how does it make a difference the cost should be the same the cost, the cost should be the same that's a very good point so what, what dr agarwal what you're saying that to us uh, so Why viewers viewers what dr agarwal is saying to us is that there is a very very uh, strong need right now for the government to look into pricing what is the cost of manufacturing something what is the man the margin that the trade is making yes, on that something and then what is being being priced at actually getting into what doctors write on their prescriptions is not the solution to the problem the solution to the problem is to regulate the prices and to get into why some companies are overcharging allow the doctors to continue to recommend what they believe is good medication uh, dr anand fakari uh, do you believe do you believe this is a good thing Dr Fadke I beg your pardon no, I don't think it will result into people getting yes yeah I don't think it will lead into people getting a, a good quality medicines at a lower prices so it's a causing an unnecessary confusion and doctors and chemists and patients are blaming each other if the really government wants to make available medicines of good quality at affordable prices the first thing that they need to do is to abolish brand names gradually that is what the hathi committee had suggested way back in 1975 today if you go to a chemist shop no chemist shop sells medicines under generic name because pharma companies don't produce medicines under generic name for the chemist so i think it is a it is about a, it's an order about which is where the situation is that their medicines are not there at all so the first step needs to be done is that you have to step out gradually phase out uh, all the brands in india because uh, and just hang, allow just hang on dr farke and then uh, you can put the company dr meta if we if we remove the brand all. names then will the pharmaceutical companies who actually manufacture these drugs and let me point out to our audience india is one of the largest largest uh, markets right now for pharmaceuticals it is a 3600 crore rupee business will we be taking away their business if we say we want to weed out the brand names altogether uh, and we are also one of the large world's largest uh, exporters of uh, pharma of pharma yes pharma so i think we have a leadership position in the world uh, we really cannot kill the pharma i think again looking at what doctor um, as earlier have said the homework needs to be done from the government if i may have a moment hmm, i understand please. from one of my colleagues who's practicing in bhutan the government of bhutan has classified three companies after studying the quality of the product and said these three are available the price is uh, within that range go ahead and write it and that's a good work that the government should do 
Uh, but isn't that then, uh, you know, sort of impeding on the free market? Well, it is. Uh, you can't have both ways. I you can't have you. both ways. Okay. Yeah. So, I think we, again, if I may, I may like to bring to the attention yeah, of the country so that we have the it. lowest price of medicines in the world. Just mm. to give an example, um, there is a drug that's now come out for interstitial lung fibrosis. It's available for 70 lakhs in the US. It's available for 6 lakhs in India. And the uh, equivalent is available for 60,000. We mm. really are at 1% of the world cost. Uh, we already but, have but you know, it's, it's unfair, Dr. Mehta, while I, get, I take your point, it is unfair to compare the prices of drugs to the US and the prices of drugs in India because sure. look at the per capita income and the difference between what somebody, what, what, what is a poor person in the US, what do they make, how do they live, and what a poor person in India makes and lives by. The truth is that we still have a large population in our country that has no access to medication at all. And how are we going to bridge that gap? And I understand that that is what the Prime Minister is attempting to do. The fact that so many people in our country have no access to either medication or medical care. Dr. Samir Dalwai, do you believe that this uh, regulation is the answer to the problem of medical care in our country? No, I don't think so. And I'll give you a good reason for it. I'm a director on one of the uh, consumer society which runs about seven to eight stores which uh, stocks generic medicines in Mumbai city. And we have about seven or eight stores now. And I must tell you that the, it's an NGO where we have about 8 or 10 people on the board. Every few days, almost every week, we meet and we look at each and every aspect of the stocking, of the sourcing of the drugs, of the delivery, so on and so forth. And we have met with excellent success. What I'd like to mention is, yes, generic, if you are providing medications at a lower price for the patient, it's obviously much, much better because the patient can afford to take the entire course of the medicine, the entire duration, especially in conditions like tuberculosis. So pricing is extremely essential from the patient's point of view. However, I must say that it comes at a high cost in terms of the quality that needs to be given into it. Now, if the government can assure that kind of quality, maintenance and monitoring all across the country, then this notification can be useful. As Dr. Agarwal mentioned some time back, the eventual healthcare is not only about affordable medications and generic versus branding. It's also the question of correct prescription. And he mentioned a good example. If I know a child, for example, you'll see people prescribing three uh, antibiotics to the same child at the same time. Now, that's ridiculous. Now, who, needs to, who, who will monitor that? That itself is going to increase the cost of medication. Well, coming in fact, back if, to in the fact you know, uh, uh, Dr. Dalwai, Dr. Again, Dalwai uh, 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 the, forgive me for interrupting you. Of companies. Just let me make a point. Yes. The two different, the two different complete yeah, my, question, industry, my question to you is, when someone comes, of, uh, just, just answer my one question, sir, please. What is the company which right. is well my which question, is registered? My so, question to you is this. When someone comes to your generic stores, which you right. say you, you run in, in various mm. cities, the Prabodhan Ashad uh, uh, Sahakari, the chemist that sells generic medicines, what is the mindset yes. of the person who accesses these, uh, Prabodhan, these medications? Yes. Are they, are they in a position to actually take a look at what the chemist is giving them and be informed? Because these are the people, their problems are the ones we are trying to solve here. Do you believe that they are actually in a position to actually know what the chemist is giving them and be able to choose good from bad? No, maybe not. Which is why the board of directors and the people who work at Prabodhan have to be so vigilant about it. I don't think the patient can just walk in and decide. We have a doctor on our stores who sometimes looks, at, who, all the times look at the prescription that has come in and needs to translate into, into a generic variant or a lower cost variant. Even that helps. So what I'm trying to say is that if the government is able to set up that kind of a monitoring and a quality assurance and a training, I mean, we are, we get our medications tested from a private laboratory and we look into it personally. If the government is able to do that, no harm. But will they? And if they but can, why don't they start with the government hospitals? You go to the municipal hospitals or government hospitals and the condition there is pathetic. Why can't they start with stocking good quality generic medicines at low cost or free in their own hospitals and demonstrate to the rest of the country how it is to be done? Absolutely. That, that's an excellent point. Minister, in fact, I'll take that a step mode. further. It's not immediately that can be transferred across the country. That's in fact, in so fact I'll take that a step further. And if the government was truly serious about public health care, you would build more hospitals. How many more public hospitals have you built and opened in the last couple?
couple of years. How many beds have we added? How many resident doctors have we added? Why are the resident doctors working oh, four down. straight days without being able to oh, go home and down. sleep and shower? These are basic questions. We will then come to whether or not we want to look over the doctor's shoulders and decide whether or not they're prescribing the right thing. There are some very basic problems we're facing in this country that we've not Absolutely. been able to solve. I want to take this question to Narendra Taneja, who's the representative of the BJP, Mr. Taneja. I welcome you to the conversation and I appreciate the fact that you've listened very patiently to everybody's opening arguments. Thank Please you. tell us, uh, since almost everyone on this panel has agreed that this does not, this is not the solution to the problem we are facing. We have a very, very pertinent problem, but a solution that's completely missing the mark from the government. <laughs> Maybe not 100 percent, but it's a step in that direction. And it's a, it's a dynamic approach. It may take a little time. But you see, as far as we are concerned, what we are basically trying to do, number one, you see, it's no, nothing against, nobody is saying doctors are corrupt, chemists are honest, honest or chemists are corrupt, doctors are, it's, we don't want to get into the debate. The whole debate is how can we make medicines available to our poor and our middle class at the minimum possible cost. So we are trying to rework the economics. That's the whole idea. And we have done homework. One of the panelists was saying government has not done the homework. We have done thorough homework. You see, it's based on a thorough homework. So that's number number two point, which is important. You see, one of the there are many ways to understand what is generic and what is not generic. One of the ways which we understand is also for generic medicine is basically medicine for which pay, patent has, ex, has expired. And there are hundreds of branded medicines known by their brand names of which patents have expired. Actually, those are generic medicines and being sold under, under brand names. And those brand names are well known across the country. So I think it's very important. So we have looked into all those aspects, done the homework, and at the same time, come out with this initiative. When you come out with, with this kind of initiative, and our country, as you know, is extremely complex. There are people, hospitals, corporate hospitals, big government hospitals, people living and working out of big city, they have a completely different approach which come, when it comes to medicines. Many of them can afford, many of them don't really care how much it really costs and all that. But there are lots of people in our country, in fact, majority of them. You know, yeah. For them, is very important and every paisa matters. So the whole idea is if you give the option, just a second, okay. if we want to give the option we want to give the option to the person or to the patient that look if you have the possibility to you know buy the medicine of the same quality of the same uh, you know with the same kind of uh, uh, you know assets then right. why should you go for it right okay so Do dr Beth, you know here's my concern okay we have a very a very got so well established it's we have a very strong change. problem it's dr Mehta, that every indian faces Every Indian family will face the problem of the fact that at some point medication becomes expensive and like Nikhil Desai pointed out that if you're talking about serious illnesses, TB, cancer, that sort of thing that require uh, sustained uh, care and sustained medication, then at some point all Indian families face the brunt. And this might be, and the government likes to do this, offer a simplistic solution that everybody thinks is like, oh my God, the government has done something fantastic for us, but what it's only doing is increasing confusion. Uh, Faye, I completely I agree with you, respect that and taking it a little further, we have a huge price on cancer medicines which are uh, so life saving and exp uh, very expensive. The other place where uh, it doesn't get known is diabetes and blood pressure. Now mm. here is something that is prescribed for 50 to 60 years and that burden is enormous. Uh, my own uh, family, we have my you know elders who are taking a large part of their pension goes into buying medicines. Yes. So I think there's no question that we want the prices reduced. And I think the happiest are doctors because then our patients can take their treatment and we are the happiest if prices come down. My only concern, and you've been uh, completely correct on this, I'm not sure that this generic issue for doctors is the only answer to it. Uh, one of the points- Is it an answer at all? Yeah. I, I don't think that that's the real answer. We could put it in brackets, but we need to balance quality with the whole thing. I really would like government to put generic high quality in all the government hospitals. Right. So at, at the end of the day, that it might be a question simply of distribution and regulation of prices and not exactly of mistrust of doctors. Madhukar is on the phone line from Thane. He's a pharmacist, I understand. Madhukar, go ahead. Uh, there is a lacuna in the drug and cosmetic acts in India. Obviously. Even though there are certain standards here in the drug act, and our medicines are complying with that, either it is branded or the generic. But the basic lacuna is there is no bioequivalence requirement for 
a generic or the branded drug in India. When these medicines are exported to the regulated countries, they are asking the bioequivalence. And this bioequivalence is nothing but the release of your drug equivalent to the gold standard, that is the reference okay, standard. So, so you're, saying, you're saying that these generic drugs, uh, that has been pointed out on the panel, the generic drugs that are available, the cheaper ones are not of great quality and that is a problem in the system. Anand is on the phone line from Pune. Anand, go ahead. Yeah, I think my question was, uh, it's a, I understand, it's a, you know, uh, it has got a multi-gamut, multi-faceted situation here. But I, I'm seriously, I do not know how does the doctor ascertain that the quality of the medicine coming out from a specific oh, company is up here. to the quality. Uh, okay, yeah. so the fair I question, why are doctors against, are against generics and why do you doubt the, uh, the quality? Do any of the doctors who want to answer, Dr. Mehta, you reacted sir, immediately. Uh, yeah, sir, we study the drugs. I mean, uh, <laughs> please, uh, we, we do that. And, uh, How do you study the drugs? Not only do we study it, because that's part of the research that we do all along. We also have what the previous uh, gentleman said. We look at the bioequivalence. Uh, we look at the certification and we do that for drugs. We do that for the devices we use. Uh, okay. They're completely standard. And the moment you get an FDA stamp on it, you know that this has been studied to the highest level. I still, I so still, I mean, why, why don't we have uh, a standardization of quality in our market? Why are we talking about the fact that doctors have to do these studies? There should be a standardization of quality below which drugs should not be made available in our market at all. Uh, Dr. Deshpande? That's coming. Uh, Bioequivalence is a very, very important character. And in fact, particularly, I'm, I'm a cancer surgeon, so whenever we... Uh, actually advise any kind of cancer medicine, uh, we always study the bioequivalence of various brands and then pick up only those which are like FDA approved. So uh, accepting something which is not really studied is just not uh, done in our field as well as in uh, so, almost so, 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 in every I'm, field. I'm just going to focus on one thing. You keep yeah. saying we only pick up things that are FDA approved. Yes. Madam, there I are things in the market that are not FDA approved, which means there are drugs available in the market. I want to say something market, about Yes, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to ask everybody. There are drugs available in the market that none of the doctors on this panel are convinced about. You believe that they are below quality. Why are they still available in our market? Dr. Deshpande? There is no regulation against it. I mean, there are people uh, selling all kinds of medicines and there is no regulation uh, against it. And in fact, uh, th when there is no regulation of, you know, uh, non-qualified people uh, prescribing medicines. So yes. it goes right up to there. Right. Dr. Fatke, you wanted to come in. I don't understand why there's no regulation on the quality of drugs available in yeah, our market. Yeah. See, that should be the first step. No, no. Let me say... Let me first say something about bioequivalence. All talk about bioequivalence is a total lie. It's a it's a total plain white lie. So someone left to explain None to me what bioequivalence is being to begin. Currently with. sold in India so have mm -hmm. undergone bioequivalence test. Huh? They are so mandatory only for I... export market, and no renowned company does bioequivalence test for his domestic market. So all this talk that doctors look at bioequivalence data is a total simple plain lie. So I, I think it, it is not correct. No, I, I, I did, I'd like to I'd like to differ. And no, secondly, that's the why we give really FDA drugs control prices, because it must it must uh, change Doctor, its you, pricing policy. You've said it correct that in India they don't want bioequivalence, whereas all export want bioequivalence, and which is why we will write for our patients drugs of the highest level, which are export quality. And we know that when it has been certified for export, it has gone through all the rigorous tests. Would you, for your own sake and your family, if I may ask a question, take something that has not been fully studied? I would not. And that is one of the reasons why doctors like to write things which are at a high quality. You yourself said bioequivalence is not required for India, only for export, which is why the panel Doctors says... have no way FDA. to find out whether the quality is good or not. No, no, right, right. Do Dr. 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 Agarwal, just one second. Dr. Dr. Agarwal wants to weigh in. The there is no objective evidence. No, 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 we do write. That's why we write FDA <laughs> approved with it's the stamp is there. There is no objective can I, evidence. Can I come in? All right, Dr. Agarwal, uh, uh, Dr. Agarwal, please go ahead. All medicines are FDA approved. All medicines in India are no, no, FDA no, approved. No, no, the plants are not and they do get de-recognized from time to time. You know that recently a couple of plants got no, de-recognized because... The Why are you calling Indian Medical Association for discussion? No, if I am representing the collective consciousness of all down. the doctors, I am not a part of the debate. No, sir, I mean, please it's go very ahead. unfortunate. If IMA is not a part of the debate, what are we discussing then? Dr. Agarwal, I'm giving you the opportunity. Please go ahead, sir. 
I mean, no, I mean, I am not being listened to at all. No, no, we're I listening mean, we to you now, Dr. Agarwal. We're listening, we're listening to you now. I want to understand what you feel. I want to so understand you... how you feel about the fact that there are drugs available in this market yes. that a lot of doctors agree up below par no, not quality. Not me. Not me. It is the policy. The it is the policy of Indian Medical Association. The policy is very clear. The orders to three lakh doctors from Indian Medical Association are very clear. Number one. write the chemical name of the drug in capital letters up to a combination of two drugs more than that there is no need in bracket write the name of the brand which is economical and of quality and that right to choose that particular brand because there are 80 companies who are making it that vests with the registered medical practitioner a chemist cannot choose a brand because the legal responsibility lies on a doctor tomorrow if the chemist start choosing the drug and if the patient is not responding in the legal law who will be responsible the chemist or the doctor the responsibility of choosing the quality economical drug from national list of essential medicine that rests with the doctor we are we debating for i the, the message is very clear to the community that write the generic name of the drug to reduce prescription errors in capital letters in bracket choose the brand which you feel is most economical and of quality preferably from national list of essential medicines i don't think so there is any debate that's what we are following if somebody wants to debate debate the policy which doctors are following let's not follow a policy what doctors should write that will be the that, that will be the job of either medical council of india or indian medical association this is what our policy is debate over on that if you want to if anybody wants to say that we are wrong they should argue with us we don't have to come back and say what is the interpretation what is not the interpretation so let me revise again write the chemical name of the drug in capital letters up to two drugs and if this more than two drugs cough syrup or a vitamin you don't need to write the name of the chemical drug in the bracket you write in lower case in non capital the name of the brand which preferably okay. from okay. national All list right. of essential medicines which is most economical and where the doctors have a faith that this is reliable right. and of quality period right is dr sanjeev mathur no i completely i completely agree with you i mean there's no question about it that's how it should be and we are completely in favor of that as long as you have all the options and the doctor decides i completely agree as, with as you as long as the doctor Doc decides yeah, I mean, do, you, do you believe it will I, cause I, any sort of confusion no, dr deshpande in Deshpande? fact what you mentioned this is what we now, do hmm. is a compliance of the same generic drugs order and uh, the medical council of india came up uh, uh, hmm. with this particular thing over a year back so uh, i i think it it is it is exactly what he is saying so okay th this actually will it will help uh, the patient it will actually create more of a confidence it will create uh, uh, transparency and i think that that's just the way to go all right dr rakesh is on the phone line from mumbai he's called us in uh, because he wants to give us his opinion dr rakesh go ahead yeah i just wanted to make one very small point a lot of this debate you mentioned two three times about access to healthcare yes why don't you use this platform to urge to increase the healthcare spending Hmm. which is there in our country is one of the lowest in the world our healthcare budgets are dismal why there is no percentage gdp increase in the healthcare budget this is the point which all of us should i, I mean my citizens are not raising this point and the whole issue about just uh, changing the brand is it going to solve the healthcare crisis in this country it's not going to solve it that's that's a very good point why isn't there an increase in the spending on public health uh, why haven't we built more hospitals why haven't we increased the number of beds deepak is on the phone line from delhi deepak go ahead i am hearing this debate and i have myself experienced this issue of generic versus branding okay. i have a question yes right which is that how will the quality of drugs be regulated if it is generic i'll give you an example why i say so Uh, two days back i was given a medicine uh, prescribed a medicine by a doctor and i went to the uh, chemist and he gave me one medicine right i mm. went to the same shop after four days and i was given the same salt but of a different uh, right. or a company now okay. i don't know what was we given first time and <coughs> giving me now right so how does the government intend to regulate the quality of drugs just by saying they will give generic does not solve my problem Absolutely, does not. So let's let's answer these questions first. Uh, Narendra Tanaja 
Why isn't the government increasing? Uh, uh, Dr. Dalvai, I see your hand up. I'll come to you. Uh, Mr. Thadeja, why isn't the government increasing its spending on public health care if it's truly serious about the access to public health and the access to health care in our country? Which government are you talking about? The federal government or the state governments? Pick or one. Pick whichever uh, one you want. I have data on the, all of it, sir. Who, or the public sector undertakings? We have data. Yeah, this, yeah exactly. No, no, I wanted you, I, I just wanted to understand it's not only one government. So when it comes to the central government, you see, just see number of aims which are being set, set up, number of new hospitals being set up across the country. Look at the number of hospitals being set up wherever, for instance, the BJP in power. Look at the numbers we have identified in Uttar Pradesh. The f health actually is a focus area for our How government. How many have you set and up already? Number two, we are also at the same time coming out with policies are incentivized. Oh, you, if you give me time, and I can give you this, you know, break up state by state. I mean, you have to understand health is, is essentially a state subject. It's not only a federal subject. So we do together. In some places, we are doing it entirely on our own. In some places, we are doing it together with the state. In many places, we are, we are going for public-private uh, uh, you know, partnership. The government, central government entities such as railways, armed forces, public sector undertaking, they are, they are setting a number of new hospitals. If you look at the total number of hospitals we are setting, it's a major, major kind of increase in comparison to what the previous government had done. But you see... Uh, uh, the important point here is what we, essentially we are trying to do. One of the panelists said that there is no regulation. There is regulation when it comes to drug manufacturing. There is regulation. Number two, number two, there seems to be a kind of bias in favor that if the drug is manufactured by a big multinational company with a big name, then the drug is very high quality which may not necessarily be the case. And if it's manufactured by a small company, a startup somewhere from Uttar Pradesh or Bihar is going, is necessarily a bad quality. I think we've got to rework this mindset. You see, important thing is to see whether it's a good quality or not. And as far as the, if, we, if you're asking this, your point is that we need to improve, further improve the quality of regulation and control. Answer is yes, yes. together with the doctors, together with the civil society, together with the patient, all the stakeholders. But the important thing is that this is basically the entire policy is meant to serve the poor and the middle class better. There may be some people, they have this kind of mindset, they have this approach. If it is by big companies, then it has to be very high yeah. quality. No, and we, I can show you a number of examples yeah. where actually drugs Mr. Tanija, manufactured by no, no. well-known companies are not necessarily Mr. of the Tanija, right quality. We respect so that. I think we have to free ourselves from this kind yeah. of mindset. And oh. at the same time, I appreciate this we are trying to work for the poor no, and for the middle yeah. class. And Me they form the majority in this country. As far as the reworking the entire health policy and all the concerned, that's a matter of a separate debate. I'm very happy to discuss that also with you. But right now what we are discussing is, and I wish that you also had taken doctors from small towns. They would have given you a completely different picture that how happy they are and how happy are the patients in small towns, no, in our I, B towns, C towns no, and rural Tanay. areas. Because they are the right, ones so so okay, that I, I know all of the doctors are going to want to respond now. What five one Sanjeev Mehta, Doctor Sanjeev Mehta, you, he, he, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, an accusation yeah. here that you Can don't I know what's really in? going on in the country. No, I think we, I think we are being misunderstood. Uh, we are the yeah, most happy oh, big when city prices. Don't know. Big city doctors don't know. Big city doctors sir, sir, don't know. we are know. most happy when patients. And I said that at the beginning when prices come down, we are completely in compliance with the IMA uh, recommendations. We want prices to come down. The point we were making, and that's all that we request you to help us, maybe you should put up on the, uh, say, the packing, the kind of certification which will help us to serve our patients, which are your patients, little better. I hope I've been able to make that. Right, and I, I also want to ask this question, Dr. Dr. Desh Pandey. Uh, now, uh, and also in response yeah. to Dr. Rakesh, who called us on the phone, who said very clearly that India's spend on, on healthcare is abysmally low. It's 1% of our total GDP. It's one of the lowest in the world. Yeah. There are third world countries that spend more of their just GDP the on healthcare than, than we do. The government, this, pitch, this figure is not correct. This figure is not correct. There is 26% increase since we came to power. Number two, you also have to include the money being invested by the private sector. You're completely excluding that figure. 
Well, you just said that big city doctors don't know anything. Doctors, uh, I, doctors, I, I, I doctors. Think doctors think that there is any di uh, difference Hello, or a divide between no, no, them. But private does mean only big city doctors. But that does mean only big city. I'm talking a big city doctor right. in big okay. cities working with big okay. corporate okay. hospitals. Okay, let, let me go to Sometimes the doctor who's representing the entire medical community, Dr. K.K. Agarwal, who represents the Indian Medical Association. also of different quality. Dr. K.K. Agarwal can speak on behalf of the Medical Association, both rural and big city. Dr. K.K. Agarwal, do you agree? Big city doctors don't know what's really going on? No, it is not correct. But I want to uh, speak about the word Jan uh, medicine stores, which uh, Modi ji wants 3,000 centers. IMA has opened a Jan Aushadi Kendra in its own premises. For the last three years, it is still not viable. But we want to make it viable. What government needs? If you want to promote uh, Jan Aushadi, which is a brand of the government, let all CGHs uh, buy generic medicines, let all state buy uh, the Jan Aushadi medicines, let Jan Aushadi medicine be available in every chemist and not only in Jan Aushadi Kendras. Let the PSUs, let the CGHs, let the MediClaim, which is under the control of the government. The whole MediClaim, IRDA, all the MediClaim policies, you can make it compulsory. Buy only those medicines which are of quality under Jan Aushadi and make every drug available in Jan Aushadi. That's one. Two, when you have reduced the prices of the stents, what about, what about lenses? What about uh, knee? What about pacemakers? What about valves? Every, what about cancer drugs which are costly? Bring them into uh, NLEM, bring them into national list of Dr. essential Dr. medicines. Increase that list so that the cost... See, we are talking about paracetamol which is used only for three days. What mm -hmm. about treatment of a cancer patient where he has to spend 15 lakhs, 16 lakhs, 17 lakhs? We need to work on them, bring them into NLEM, reduce the cost to a person right. for whom he is selling his, uh, his property, like dialysis, like uh, the, the cost of those things which are selling the house. We need to reduce that. Let's not talk about a drug which is one rupee, one and a half rupee, whether it is 10 pesa or not. So we are for, we right. are for affordable health care. We are for a cheaper and economical treatment to everybody. So we need to have a discussion where the medical association, the DCGI, the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Chemical Fertilizer should sit together. Unfortunately, right. in the whole N N NPPA, when the prices are decided, the medical community is not there. They take the, the trade, the, the, they take the pharma industry, but medical industry is not invited uh, as an association to decide how to make economic. Right. Right. I have a very quick That's question for Dr. S and Samir Dalwai. I just want to add last thing, and that is the same drug. Right. Very quick question for Dr. Samir Dalwai. Do we have drug, enough pharmacists in this generic, country? Generic, generic trade or generic brand of the same company should be one cost. Dr. Dalwai, do we have enough Should pharmacists we? in the country who are properly qualified to do their jobs? Yeah. Are no, we, we sure that every no, pharmacy no, is manned by someone who has done the course and who's qualified? All, not at all. Go ahead. You just walk out on the streets and find out for yourself. It's, there's not. There are hardly any colleges. And we know the pharmacists who are qualified, at least on paper, they outsource their licenses. And it's generally run by somebody who's from the family business who's running it. And I completely, you know, disagree with this fact that the government is doing great on health care and health spending. It's not about spending. They're just starting five-star or bigger hospitals or aims in a few places. Look at the public health service. It's abysmal. Last daughter first I'll tell you. The public health service hasn't had any innovation at all in the last three years. It's only these big popular hospitals that are coming up. And this is also a populist entire kind of move. The generic movement can work. Even if you substitute Which the same company's medicines Which like state? Dr. Agarwal the mentioned, they are, brand, they are marketed in three different areas. About? So you can market it in a much lower cost. So Which this needs to be about? in all states, all over the place. The, it is a public health sector, the primary health care that needs to be strengthened. And on the other hand, even if you look at things like oncology, who is paying a poor patient for all the medical expenses for a cancer patient? There is no help from the government for that. So I think instead of just pushing off the blame on doctors and blaming doctors as is the fashion nowadays, I think the government really needs to re rethink and relook at its policy of public <coughs> health, taking the doctors into confidence rather than just making them the villains. I don't think this is just going to carry off like that. Nikhil Desai, a last word to the citizen, last yeah, word to the patient and the citizen. I think it's a wrong statement. Uh, man was telling Nobody's the government is doing this and I said at the very outset.
This uh, Tata Hospital is the only hospital in Bombay who is catering to cancer patients. Maharashtra. And the in patients Maharashtra, are, people come from all uh, over the yeah, state. All over, and you can't have a, another hospital up till now. Hmm. The patients the are the country. staying on the footpath. Now, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. So don't. And then, you know, consider, consider in all of our big cities, for example, the public hospitals that we've had, we've had them for decades. Where are the new hospitals? Jitendra is on the phone line from Pune. Jitendra, go ahead very quickly. Yeah, hello to everybody. Yes. Okay, I, I would like to share an experience with, with all the panelists. And, uh, you know, I and uh, my uh, my elder son, we both had throat infection and we were prescribed an antibiotic. And I went to a new, this uh, Swasta Medical, you know, this cheap uh, medicine, a generic medicine store that has opened. Yes. I bought an, an a strip of antibiotics, which was the price printed on the, um, that strip was 2 99 I got it for 50% less at 150 and uh, my eldest son who also later on had suffered from uh, throat infection i went to uh, to our regular medical shop and uh, brought a uh, medicine uh, branded medicine which was 125 so this this needs to be controlled yes. it's not this generic movement will die, die a slow death because uh, right right I, I understand what you're saying i understand what you're saying i also want to very quickly bring in mr dhavan who just called us he's the deputy director retired uh, of pharmaceuticals for the government of karnataka mr dhavan go ahead where do you stand on the argument of my medicine my choice hello yes yes go ahead sir we can hear you yeah good evening madam and the panelist good evening sir now, the issue I have been hearing the debate going on. The, the debate is focused in, in saving the fort of the doctors. Hmm. The prescription, once it is given, it is a final. It doesn't go any, there are no checks and breaks for any prescription. Hmm. Even if there is a mistake in the prescription, I, with due regards and respect, I am talking. And that will be passed on to the patient without any correction and then it is the hell to the patient. And the next, when he comes back, okay, this happened, is it? Okay, we will change the medicine, don't worry, this is going to happen. Now, the whole focus, instead of going on against the generic drug or a brand or anything, I want the Indian doctors to insist that their prescription is attended by a qualified pharmacist only. Why do yes. they encourage yes. a chemist mm -hmm. who doesn't have a pharmacist? Hmm. Some panelists, one of the panelists was rightly telling the certificate is outsourced and it is there only yes. for the namesake. Yes. Yeah, why? Instead of that, immediately they should refuse to that, uh, that chemist and, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, ban that chemist and should not accept the service from that chemist. Right. But so that's a well point. I've, I've come to the end. I've come to the end of this discussion. It's very interesting, and I'm so glad we had all of these uh, these gentlemen on the panel because it's such an important thing. It's complicated, but it affects each and every one of us. And this is what we've come up with. Uh, the, the, there is there seems to be some sort of mistrust right now between these three stakeholders government doctor and pharmacist on how this should actually function and where the corruption actually lies. The solutions has been offered by our panelists will help the patient. Spend more money on healthcare. There aren't enough qualified pharmacists or chemists in our country. It's a qualification. If you don't have enough hospitals, you won't have enough pharmacists. There aren't enough hospitals and there aren't enough beds. Regulate the quality and the prices and not the doctors. And most importantly, bring the doctors into confidence when you're talking about this regulation. It was shocking to actually hear the representative of the Indian Medical Association saying doctors were not consulted. It was shocking to actually hear the representative of the government saying that big city doctors don't really know what's going on in the rest of the country. Who knows what's going on in the rest of the country then? And why is it that we're having trouble trusting each other? Let's remember that most of our population is illiterate. They will trust what you write on that piece of paper. You cannot expect the pharmacist and the customer to finally make that choice. It has to be a, a decision that is made right now, taking doctors into confidence because we have a population that can't choose for themselves. In the meantime, we do appreciate the fact that the government of India is working so hard to bring down the prices of drugs. Thanks for watching.